The king has fallen. The realm is divided. Now is your chance to call on your allies and unite the land under one banner. Now is the time to take a seat upon an empty throne. An Empty Throne is a head-to-head -head card game in which players attempt to manipulate the playing field in their favor. The game is set up with three face-up field decks in the center and a tombs deck nearby. Each player will have a field next to each field deck. Then, the five starting cards are shuffled and two are dealt to each player. The remaining starting card is placed to the side and the game is ready to begin. On your turn, you will take two actions, which can be to place a card from your hand to one of the fields or the tombs, or you can move one of your already placed cards to a new location. When you place a card to a field, you can either use the recruit ability of the top card in the adjoining field deck, which is the top portion of the card, or use the impact ability of the card you just played, which is the bottom portion of the card. If the card you played is either a lower number or the same color as the card on the field deck, you can use both the recruit and impact abilities. When playing to the tombs, you simply draw the top card of the deck and use the impact ability. If, at the end of your turn, you have formed a coalition at any of your fields, you will flip your field over to the gold side. A coalition is when you have three of the same number or color cards in a single field, or if you have four different numbers or colors in a single field. The game ends when either two or more decks are empty, or if one player has flipped all three of their fields. You will then score one point for each of the locations that your cards have a total of 12 or more, two more points for each of your flipped fields, and an additional point for every card in your hand that matches the color of the starting card that was set aside. Whoever has the most points is the winner. The first thing that stood out to me when playing an empty throne was the amount of text that was spewed about the table. Every card has text to describe its abilities, there's text on every field and tomb card, even the player aid is a double-sided whammy of full text. After my eyes adjusted, I was able to focus on what the text was telling me, and it really isn't so bad. Much of the text is just helpful reminder, and is often repeated. Every field reminds you what to do when you play a card to it, and all cards of a single color have the same ability, so the text is repeated. When you notice this, it's really not so bad. While I generally err on the side of text over symbols or nothing at all, an empty throne perhaps leans a little too far in that direction, as it does add to the visual clutter of an otherwise stripped down game. That same feeling of unease remained after playing my first few games. An Empty Throne eschews a lot of general card game conventions. There is no hand limit and there is no discard. Once a card goes into play, it becomes a part of the landscape, always capable of something. Most of the cards are drawn face up, so your opponent can track what you have. The window dressing of armed and armored soldiers aiding you to claim the Empty Throne might suggest that it's a card battling game, but it's not. The three distinct rows might suggest that it's a lane control game, a la Battle Line or Lost Cities, but it's not. Instead, an Empty Throne is all about movement. This is probably best explained through example. Playing this green card to this field triggers the Recruit and Impact abilities since it has a lower value than the Field Deck card. The Recruit ability says to draw this card and exchange a card in your hand with an opponent's played card. You take the blue card from your opponent's field and trigger the Impact ability of your card which says to move a card to its player's hand. You point to the remaining card in your opponent's field and they begrudgingly add it to their hand. With your second action, you place the newly acquired card into the middle field since you can't play two cards to the same field on the same turn. You activate the impact ability which allows you to move the card you just played to another field. Your turn is over and not only have you created a coalition to flip your field, you've also wiped out your opponent's field when they were just one card away from a coalition of their own. Wild swings of position like this are what an empty throne is all about. And while it can be surprising to have your work undone, it never feels unfair since you're working with the same tools that your opponent has and you can see what cards they choose. Occasionally, you will reveal a card that's perfect for your opponent, but even drawing cards is a choice that you made. These card interactions can lead to great feelings of accomplishment if leveraged correctly, but it's easier said than done. When playing, I often felt on the verge of a big move without actually being able to accomplish it. There's still a haze that keeps me from seeing through the matrix. Perhaps it will fade with more experience, or maybe I'm just not that smart. I suppose if every turn were an explosion of combos, it might dull the satisfaction I had when I did manage to pull off something clever. One of the reasons I like playing so many different games is that I can appreciate how a designer can express an idea or a message. And I don't mean anything political or social, though that can be commendable in its own right, but on a more primitive gaming level. An Empty Throne is about shifting landscapes, movement and liquidity. Ownership is cast aside in favor of living in the now. Play in a card is only as important as how it can help you with a specific goal. If it abandons your side of the field in a later turn, c'est la vie. All that matters is if it was able to propel your position. That's not always possible with an opponent looking to thwart you, but that's where the battle of the wits comes in. For as much fun as it is to mold the table to your will, it's also fun to acknowledge when your opponent has done the same. 
Does it feel like a political struggle to claim the throne? Not really, but it does serve as a nice excuse for sharp character art. Yes, the copious amount of text is noisy, but it fades away after a few turns. And the central decks can be tricky to manipulate without revealing what's underneath. But as a physical manifestation of a clever idea, an empty throne succeeds and I think it's well worth checking out.